Well, good morning. This is, I'm Pastor Rich from the Country Church at Ruthton. And basically our church, uh, uh, my wife, Fran, and I have pioneered the church here at Ruthton. And I believe it uh, happened in 1987. So we've been here a while, and I've been here a while. And uh, so I just want to say good morning to you. This is really different for me because I'm not used to all this technology and uh, how it advanced so rapidly in my life that uh, I just couldn't keep up with it. So uh, you have to bear with me this morning as we share some of the Word of God uh, here this morning. I, I want to first of all read, uh, well anyway, first uh, someone asked me the other day, how far back do you go if you don't? if you haven't kept up with this technology. And I said, well, basically about back to the uh, Pony Express days, probably. Uh, probably not quite that far back, but I'm kind of from the old school. And uh, I remember my dad farming with horses. I mean, uh, you know, my dad had a player and a and billing wire and he could fix anything. Now I tell you, when this machinery breaks down on the farm, I. I've talked to farmers. I mean, if they got to have their uh, tractors fixed or something like that, they, they can't hardly do it themselves anymore and got to take it to town. It takes 12 milk checks to pay the bill. So times have really changed and uh, uh, through the years. And uh, I'm not ancient. I mean, I always say if you're 43, I'm old. But if you're 93, I'm young. But I want to share some of the word with you this morning about the comforter. We need this comforter. And on, on 2 Corinthians chapter 1, it says this, Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we are comforted of God. In other words, it's saying we that are comforted by God can help and comfort others. But then I would like to use this scripture today in, in John chapter 14, verse 16. I will Jesus said, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and he shall be in you. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. See, we never know what a year will bring, but it seems each year, we will face a challenge of some sort. With all the uncertainty in the world today, we need this comforter more than ever. If you are a believer and given your life to Christ and truly born again, you have this comforter. He says it will abide with you forever. Now, you talk about good news. That's good news. That's assurance. Because this is coming from a God that cannot lie. In verse 17, it says, the, the world cannot receive him because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and he shall be in you. The church basically has an advantage here. The believer has an advantage here. But the world and those that aren't believers cannot receive her. And I wonder... If that's why so there's so much panic and so much fear uh, in the in our world today, because and I asked about that. I asked a fellow about that the other day, and I said, "Why, why all the, uh, um, you know, uh, why all this fear and why all this going on and the people panicking and hoarding and all this type of thing?" And he gave me an answer that I should have known. He said. Well, they don't have God, Pastor Rich. They don't have God. 
And this this is a time when we really need the Lord. This is a time when any time uh, Jesus said he would come again. And I'm sure that that's a promise that will be fulfilled. And it's probably nearer than we believe. So the believer has an advantage in this respect. In verse 8 to 18, Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Remember, I said, this is a promise from a God that cannot lie. The gift of the Holy Spirit comes by God's favor. We cannot earn the privilege of having the Holy Spirit abide in us. It comes, the gift of the Holy Spirit comes to us by faith. Galatians 3, 2 says this, Receive ye the spirit of the works by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. By faith we receive the gift of salvation. By faith we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The disciples were, <laughs> they were just horrified when, when Jesus said, I, I'm, I need to go, I need to leave. And just at the thought of that they wouldn't have Jesus just, just horrified them. They didn't know how they would get along without Jesus. They felt they would be, be helpless without him. In verse 16, Jesus said, The Father shall give you another comforter. Now, there's two translations of another. Now, one translation means <clears throat> it, will be, it will be used with another kind of like kind as, you, as referred to as the same kind. The other is used when another of a different kind is referred to. Jesus was saying here, I am going to ask the Father and he will give you another comforter, another helper of exactly the same kind as I am. The word comforter literally means one called to be the side of. See, this has been the Jesus, this has been Jesus' relationship with the disciples for three years on this earth, physically in the flesh. Jesus invited his disciples to draw near to him. To Philip, he said, follow me. To Philip Nathaniel, he said, come and see. To James, John, Peter, um, Andrew, Jesus said, come ye after me, and I will make you fishers of men. As these men followed Jesus, they experienced a transforming taking place in their lives. When you truly follow Jesus, when you truly, sincerely follow Jesus, it will transform your life. I can bear witness with that. And someday maybe I'll give my testimony uh, over this machine here that's looking at me. And uh, which, <laughs> which is really strange for me. You see, when you truly, truly follow, it will transform your life. And you've given your life to him. All things pass away and all things become new. What an experience in your life. What a transformation. Not only that, you have this hope, this blessed hope, this blessed assurance. That if anything happened, if you leave this old world, you'll be in the presence of God for an eternity. Wow. Wow. So I challenge you today to follow Jesus. You see, they, the disciples in Jesus, they walked together through crowded cities. They sailed and fished together on the sea. They prayed together in the mountains and in the deserts. They worshiped together in the temple. They watched Jesus and listened to him. They saw in Jesus what it meant to be completely surrendered to the Father. They saw what it, what it meant to be completely, to completely forsake sin. They saw his love, 
his compassion for the needy. They saw someone willing to forsake all. They saw someone completely focused on eternity, not on worldly things. So to be without him, they were devastated. They were, they were, they were just, it was just unthinkable for them. You see, when they saw someone that forsake on eternity, tell me, I tell you, once you get born again, once you begin to follow God, he will lead you and he will direct you and, and your thoughts and your mind will continually be on God. One time I prayed with a person and, and uh, for salvation and, and uh, as we talked and as the conversation went, I, I had an opportunity to, to just uh, kind of witness to him about Jesus and uh, about the love of God and so forth, that his sins could be forgiven and, and so forth. And when I, we got done through praying, uh, the person left and I said, so, you know, now you're going to leave here and you're going to go down the road and I'm going to tell you what, the first thing that's going to come to your mind today is God. Because when the Spirit comes alive in your life, it focuses and ministers to your very inner being. Jesus said, you know, all through the Bible, the Lord invites us to come to him and to draw near to him. Jesus said, he that cometh to me, I will no way cast him out. He said, come unto me, all that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. In the last book of Revelation, Revelation, the last book in the Bible, the last chapter, it has an altar call. We still have altar calls here at the old country church. I believe we need them. I believe we have to give people an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Of course, they voluntarily need to come by themselves, as God prompts them, or the Spirit, you might say, moves them. But he had a final, final altar call. He said, the Spirit and the bride say, come. And he that hears, say, come. And say, come. And he that is a thirst, come. And whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. You see, when Jesus walked on this earth, he was limited doing his earthly ministry. To be, to, you know, he could only be at one place at one time. He was all man, but he was all God. For this reason, Jesus said, it's expedient or it's to your advantage advantage that I go, for if I do not go away, the comforter will not come, but come to you. But if I go, I will send him unto you. You see, in the Old Testament or the Old uh, Covenant, the Holy Spirit didn't dwell in, in all the believers as he does on this side of, of Pentecost. He will come upon chosen, chosen certain individuals for a limited time to empower them for some certain task. But today he dwells within every believer. Isn't that something? Do we realize this? Do we really realize, realize how close he is to us? Dwelling in us? Walking with us? So I might insert here, don't take him where he wouldn't go. That would be good advice. And John 16, 8 says, he will, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Now this is probably a side of the Lord that we really don't want to hear. 
and a lot of times are, are today are our are, are churches and preachers just aren't preaching anything about these things. You see, he convicts us uh, when we need to change in our lives. He makes us uncomfortable comfortable until we ob we're obedient to the will of the Father. But we don't hear too much about sin. We don't hear uh, too much about judgment and how to live righteously or in right standing uh, with God. Because, you know, but he says, Jesus said, he said, he will lead you, he will guide you and lead you into all truth. He wants us to be victorious in every aspect or every way of our lives. Yes, in this sinful, troubled world of today, we will need the assurance of the Comforter active and demonstrating the power and the presence of God in our lives. Remember this, the world cannot receive him. The world does not have him. The unbeliever that has not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, sincerely serving the Lord in their heart, because the Bible says, with the heart, Man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's with the heart that we believe. And we need to believe basically in the heart, because that proves basically and changes our lives. God's a God of the heart. He's not a God of rituals. He's a God of the heart. But we have him in you, beside you, leading you, guiding you, empowering you to be an overcomer. Many time, times Jesus reasserts us, uh, let, you know, fear not. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Leave also in me, for in my house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. That were, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you will be also. You know, in John 14, he said, Peace I leave with you, peace I give unto you. Not as the world give I give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Aren't you glad he holds the world in his hands? <laughs> Church, it's your hour in these days of uncertainty. You have the creator of the universe living in you, with you, forever. Remember, it says the world cannot receive him. Have you given your life to Christ? Are you born again? We could go to John chapter 3. When Nicodemus, he was a spiritual leader of the, of the Pharisees, you might say. And he came to Jesus by night. And he said to Jesus, I know that you might, you evidently uh, come from God because otherwise you couldn't do the things you're doing. And Jesus just straightforward says to him, Nicodemus, you need to be born again. And I like this because we can relate to it uh, uh, so well uh, in our humanity, you might say. That, and Nicodemus says, you mean that can I enter again into my mother's womb and be born again? Well, Jesus, Jesus says, don't be surprised when I tell you. You need to be born again because what's born of the flesh is flesh. And what's, what's born of the spirit is spirit. I was born into the writer family. I like to think it was a good family. 
But I, now, but I had to be born into the family of God. I had to be born of the Spirit. And that's, I wouldn't be sitting here today sharing the Word of God with you if I wasn't born of the Spirit. It will change your life so dramatically, way beyond your imagination. Today, I'm a pastor and have been for the last 30, 35 years. That's completely way beyond my imagination that I ever thought I would ever be. I tell you, God will take you places way beyond your imagination. He will work through you and with you <laughs> and in you way beyond you ever imagine. I just urge you today, if you haven't received Christ, receive him today. In Ephesians 2, it says, you're saved by grace through faith, not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not by works. Should any man boast or brag about it? Because if we could save ourselves, it wouldn't be grace. Grace is God's favor. When he hung on that cross that day, and he gave his life and shed his blood because the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. He thought of you and I and he suffered and he died and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. But you never... <clears throat> You need this comforter at this hour and in this day. In fact, you need him. Even if we wasn't in this situation today, you need this comforter. In closing today, I wonder, would you pray with me? In closing, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for, for your favor, Lord, that just abounds towards us every day with all our imagination. And today, Lord, I, I know that I've sinned. And Lord, I ask that you just forgive me of my sins. I ask, Lord, that you would come into my life and into my heart. I ask, Lord, that Jesus, that I receive Jesus Christ this day as my Lord and as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, if you said that prayer, the simplest little prayer, you see, I gave my life to Jesus, and I didn't know how to pray or anything. I was a dairy farmer, and I was knelt beside a bale of hay in my cow barn one day and I didn't know how to pray. I just called out to God. I've heard an evangel a radio evangelist over the radio and in fact his name was Henry Vanderbush and last week I think you were introduced to uh, Fr Pastor Frank Vanderbush which, which is associate pastor at the, here at the country church. But I, ha I remember him saying, you have to have Jesus into your life. So like, uh, uh, like, like a second thought, you might say, uh, an afterthought, I said, oh yeah, and Jesus, would you come into my life? I tell you folks, I got up from that bill of hay and I was different. Something happened. Now you have to realize I didn't even know what happened myself at that time. But I learned later on, at that moment, I was born again. I was born, I had the Spirit of God come alive within me. He drew me to the Word of God. I had, like I said, my father's imagination that you can ever imagine that he would call me into a ministry. I was a farmer. I enjoyed farming. I had a good dairy herd. I enjoyed that. 
but God took me in a different direction way beyond I ever imagined. But if you said that prayer today, and I urge you to do so, you know, just just, just for a moment, uh, all, all your churchanity and, and all your religiosity and all, all the good things you've done, uh, just put that aside for a moment and just ask Christ and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Just ask forgiveness of your sins. He will do it because he said so. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. God bless you. Have a good day.